in our uh, class. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my name is uh, Shelly Goldberg. I'm the current president of the Computer Club, and we're happy to have everyone here. We've got uh, uh, close to 40 of us in, uh, in this class right now. And normally, uh, when we have classes in the computer lab, we can't fit this many people in there. So this has uh, been working out very well over Zoom. And uh, <clears throat> we're happy to offer these classes to you uh, uh, free of charge. And uh, we also have um, our monthly meetings, which normally would have been in the, uh, in the Dreno Ballroom. Uh, we've been doing those over Zoom as well. And we've had as many as um, uh, 82 uh, uh, participants, uh, some couples, so actually it probably was well over 100 um, participating over Zoom. Our next um, monthly meeting will be on March 11th, and the topic then will be on uh, uh, streaming music. Um, and the other thing that we do offer to you is on Monday mornings, even though our computer lab is closed, we're doing a virtual lab every Monday morning. So if you have problems, um, and you're a member of the uh, computer club, all you have to do is respond to the uh, uh, email that I send out each week uh, with your questions. And uh, uh, we set you up with an appointment time and you come on to uh, uh, via Zoom onto our virtual lab meeting. And uh, we've been able to help, uh, help everyone uh, uh, solve their issues. So um, uh, welcome one and all. Um, Bill Zaletti will be your instructor for this morning, and we'll be doing a class on iPhones. Go ahead, Bill. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen, and uh, we're going to um, go right into the class. I want to uh, let everybody know that this is, um, this is a class on iPhones and iPads, and it's an introductory class. I will talk a little bit about some newer um, versions of the software that have come out for the phones at the end of the presentation, but by no means uh, do I want to restrict this to any questions that you have. Uh, during, the, during the presentation, as Shelly indicated, he's muted everyone. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, if you move your mouse around, there's a chat button at the bottom of your screen. And if you click on the chat button, you can ask questions during the uh, during the class um, and uh, just type in your question. At the end of the class, I stop my sharing and then I go to the questions and answer those. I also have the capability at the end of, at the end of this class to um, uh, to share my screen on my iPhone. So if we want to get into any specifics about uh, how to something, then we can do that as well. Uh, we like to keep these classes to about an hour. Uh, we also, uh, I try to keep my presentations down to about 20 minutes and, and then um, open it up for questions because that's usually the most meaningful part of the class. So let's start with it. I'm going to start the class, iPad and iPhone class outline. Uh, the things I'm going to talk about is powering on the equipment, top of screen icons, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, display and brightness, sound, security, battery, privacy. Um, and a question came up and I want to talk about it on the do not disturb. How do you turn the phone off so that it won't either vibrate or uh, make a, a noise? The do not disturb feature will do that. So I forget who asked me that question, but you can use that feature as well. The control center, uh, closing and switching between applications, moving icons around on the screen, Safari, the clock, notifications, general background, app store and updates, memory concerns, backup in iTunes. And then at the end of, of this presentation, I've added about five or six slides regarding the new operating system of 14.4. So powering on and powering off the equipment. <clears throat> if you have a uh, iPhone uh, six and prior, then you have a button at the top of the screen if you notice in here, um, I, I indicated top of screen button that you hold down and it will either turn the phone off or if you uh, if the phone is off, you hold down until you see the Apple icon and it'll turn the phone on. On uh, sevens and eights, version seven and eight iPhones, there's a side button right here on the right side of the phone if you're facing the phone. You, again, you hold down on that button until you see a screen appear 
that says, uh, do you want to turn this phone off? And you slide and turn the phone off. If the phone is off, you hold it down again until you see the Apple, Apple icon, and then it will, the phone will turn on. On the 10, 11, and 12 phones, uh, the power button is on the right-hand side. It's indicated here. Um, and the way you turn the phone off is by holding down the power button and the uh, volume up button. Uh, and again, you hold it down until you see the slide the power off. When, and then this is the same that you see on all the iPhones. You slide it, power it off. When it's time to power the phone back on, again, you hold down uh, this power button on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, the volume up button, and that, and that will power the phone on. When you see the Apple icon appear in the center of the screen, then you know your phone is coming on. There are a number of top of screen icons. I'm not going to cover all of them on this chart, um, but some that, that I think are very useful, some that I use. Um, the battery indicator at the bottom on the left-hand side, if you can see my mouse moving around, I do have mine turned on so I can see what power I have left in my battery. I have the Bluetooth turned on so I can see that. If I'm on airplane mode, I can see the airplane mode. The signal strength, uh, the signal strength on my phone actually has bars as opposed to these dots. Um, and then the last one that I use is the Wi-Fi indicator. Uh, because I'm using, uh, I, my phone is, uh, the service that I have of my phone is from Xfinity. Uh, the Xfinity system works really well to keep down the uh, uh, usage of your uh, data. Uh, if you stay in, in Wi-Fi, wherever you are, if you're on a Wi-Fi system and doing anything with your phone other than calling and texting, then you will save a considerable amount of money. Airplane mode. Uh, so if you need to put your phone in airplane mode uh, for whatever reason, you can either use the uh, control panel that you see on the left-hand side of the screen, or you can go to your settings screen on the right-hand side. This uh, control center uh, that you see on the left-hand side of the screen uh, is a easy way to do um, uh, a lot of different functions. And one of them, of course, is put it in airplane mode, which is in the upper left corner. Now, if you go to system or settings and it's a couple of keystrokes, you can go to into your settings screen and then at the top of the screen is airplane mode. You just click this little button and it'll automatically turn it off and it'll stay in airplane mode until you turn it back on. Same thing with the control center. You have to manually turn it on and turn it off. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, some people do not care to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on all the time. I do uh, because I use Bluetooth. Uh, particularly in my car. Uh, my car does support Bluetooth. So um, it connects to the automobile and I can use the sound in the automobile to uh, have a conversation with someone if they call me while I'm driving, hands-free driving. And as far as the Wi-Fi is concerned, I talked about that earlier. Uh, I keep mine on all the time so that uh, I can take advantage of uh, the Wi-Fi zones that I'm in. Now, I will tell you that as far as using Wi-Fi, I may use it to search the Internet um, when, I'm, when I'm in a, um, say, like a public zone. But I will not use it for any private uh, information, such as banking, even though I have that on my phone, even though I use that on my phone. I do not uh, use that in public uh, locations. Uh, so and, and I also use Wi-Fi calling. I have that turned on. That makes, uh, that gives you a better signal if you're in a, uh, particularly, let's say you're traveling and you're out west somewhere in some very difficult areas. If you happen to be in a, in a lodge somewhere that has Wi-Fi supported, you'll get a better signal that way. So uh, I don't talk about Wi-Fi calling in this presentation, but it is something to consider. Do not disturb. Uh, this feature works really nicely. Uh, you can have a schedule, which I actually have set up on my phone. I have it scheduled from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. so that all calls that come in automatically go to voicemail, except you can set up in your, um, in, in your, on your phone, you can set up uh, preferred uh, folks. And uh, such as I have my family set up, I also have a, a close friend set up who may need us in the middle of the night for something, then the phone will automatically ring through. Otherwise, it'll go directly to voicemail. 
if you tell people that uh, the way they can still get through is by calling in and hang up and then calling back, I think it's in 60 uh, seconds, the second time it will ring through if it's an emergency. You can also set it up for uh, this location. So the question that came up, uh, is there a way for me to turn my phone uh, silent completely so it doesn't vibrate or it doesn't uh, make any sound? Yes, uh, do not disturb, which you can access. Let me go back to screen. Which you can access on this screen right here. There's this little, looks like half moon. So when you go to your control center, uh, control panel, you can click on that half moon. It'll take you to this particular uh, situation. You can say for one hour until this evening, until I leave this location, uh, until the end of this event. Uh, if you have this event scheduled on your calendar, then it'll say till the end of this event. As an example, I use this when I go to church, when we can safely go back to church. Um, I may be there longer than one hour. So I will put it into do not disturb mode until I leave that location. When I physically leave that location, walk up to my car, that do not disturb turns off and then the phones will start to ring again. So I think Jim, you asked that question about turning the phone off completely. This is a way to turn the phone off for you. Uh, display and brightness, there are settings uh, called display and brightness in the settings mode. Uh, most of the time the phone is going to be set automatically to this. But if you are in very bright sunshine, you may find that you need to change the brightness on your phone. Uh, if you go to settings, display and brightness at the top of the screen here, you see uh, this, this slider that has the word brightness above it. And you can slide that any way you want to to make it brighter so you can read it in, uh, in, in uh, direct sunlight. And if you do do that, then I would suggest that when you get back inside, you go back to this setting and move it over. Um, it, there is an automatic feature on it that it usually will just automatically uh, change for you. I've not had a problem with mine in direct sunlight versus uh, inside. Uh, but if, if that is something that bothers you, then you can raise the brightness on the phone so you can see it in direct sunlight. There's a feature called dark mode. I use this feature, it's for nighttime. Um, it's so that at night, it, this, the phone, when, it, when it, you actually uh, turn it on, it is not so bright and glaring in your face. Um, there, the dark mode, you can get to that by uh, going to your settings and going to display and brightness. Um, and there's a light and dark mode in here. I have my dark mode set for, um, I have mine set for sunset to sunrise. If you look on the left panel here, it says sunset to sunrise or custom settings. You can have custom settings, uh, light appearance 7 a.m., dark appearance 10 p.m., or you can do the sunset sunrise. It automatically tracks uh, based on the uh, uh, location that you're in. It automatically tracks the weather in, in, uh, in that location, and it knows when the sun goes down, and it knows when the sun comes up, and it automatically resets your phone between dark mode and, uh, and light mode. Uh, that's something you might want to try and play with. It was introduced in iOS 13 and I have used it and I, I absolutely love it for nighttime because when you turn the phone on at night, if you do turn it on and it's uh, at night, it doesn't glare in your face with uh, very bright. Here's an example of dark mode. This is what it looks like. So you can read everything. You can see you can read everything quite nicely, but it has a dark background versus that light white background that would be staring at you. Sounds, uh, you can change your, uh, your ringer. Uh, you can put it on vibrate or you can put it on silent mode. Uh, you can actually change that uh, if you want to so that you won't hear anything. You can also change the uh, volume of your ringer alerts uh, in, this, in this particular screen at settings and then sound, sounds and haptics. You can also change your ringer, right? At least on the uh, 10, 10, 11 and 12, you can change the ringer when your phone is in, in, in its uh, normal state mode before you uh, go to any application. When all the applications are closed, you can just uh, change the ringer sound on your phone by just using the up and down uh, uh, volume buttons on your phone. And that will also lower or raise the uh, ringer tone on your phone. 
Uh, security, uh, you should use a strong security password on your phone. Um, I uh, They say stronger than the four digit code. I still use the four digit. The choices when you set your phone up or you can change that at any time is uh, four or six digits. I just happen to use four, it's more convenient. But uh, like this gentleman was talking about earlier who has the 12 now, I also use facial recognition. Um, so that that is something if you have the capability of using facial recognition, I would suggest you set that up. The unfortunate thing about facial recognition is now that we are uh, have to wear masks when we're outside of the house, the facial recognition doesn't work. So you still have to use your code to open your phone up. Uh, turn off lock screen notifications. Uh, turn on two step verification. I will talk. I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. That's something you really should do. Um, when I logged into a doctor's appointment this morning to a new doctor that I've not, I've not been to, they require a two-step uh, verification uh, with your phone. And I would suggest that everything that offers you two-step verification, you should turn it on. If you use two, two uh, step verification, the only time you have to use it is the first time that you do something. Uh, after that, as long as you are in your in your home or wherever that you normally would access the, the network, uh, it won't ask you for that two step. But uh, if you stay, get outside of that network, then it will ask you for uh, a verification code. Disable secure uh, Siri on lock screen if you want to. You can do that. Um, it, it then it means that you have to have your phone on in order to use Siri if you use Siri very often. Turn off automatic sync to iCloud. Um, I do not do that. I keep the iCloud in sync all the time so that I can keep everything that's on my phone synced up. Discard automatic Wi-Fi connections to known networks. Um, I also do not use that feature, but if you're concerned about Wi-Fi, then you should turn that on. Um, get, uh, get used to VPN. I also do not use a VPN. But that is a good a, a good practice to have. Uh, turn off cookies in your browser. That I do have. I do turn the cookies off in my browser, and I do that so that it doesn't uh, bring me back to locations unless I want to go back to that particular location when I'm browsing. Lock screen notification. This is the, you would go to your settings uh, and then notifications and then show uh, on this one uh, or when it's unlocked. Uh, that's if you want to do that, that's up to you. I keep mine uh, I keep mine on so that I can see notifications. Notifications are things like emails, news, et cetera, those type of things. So if I lift my phone, whenever I lift my phone up, it automatically comes on. I can right now see that I have a uh, uh, an Outlook email. Uh, I have two Outlook emails and I have one message on my phone right now. That's a pretty handy feature to have without having to actually turn the phone or go into the phone to see everything. And it gives you a, a uh, highlight of what those messages are. Two-factor verification, I do highly recommend this. Uh, go, to, um, go to your settings, your name and password and security. As you can see on this screen, this one's turned on. Uh, I, do, I do highly recommend two-factor authentication. And I would suggest that you do that with all your banking applications, whether you do it on your computer or whether you do it on your phone. Um, I have just about everything that allows, uh, allows it. I have two-factor authentication. What that means is when I log into something uh, and it doesn't recognize the location I'm in, uh, then it will ask uh, for, for me to accept the code, a text code to me on my phone. And then I have to enter that text code in order to go forward. Um, that's just a, another level of security. Uh, if you're in that, let, let's say that you get away for the winter. When you go away for the winter, um, everything that you try to access will require that two-factor authentication. But once it recognizes that location, it will no longer ask you for that. Uh, but it is a security feature that I would suggest you turn on. Uh, disable Siri on, on lock screen, that's up to you. Um, I do have mine turned on so that I, I, don't, I do not have to be have my phone on in order to talk to Siri. 
There are times that I do ask Siri a question and Siri will come back with an answer. Um, and oftentimes if you ask the question, it'll take you to a um, Safari and to a, um, uh, you know, like a Google search. And then, then you will have to turn the phone on. In my case, it's facial recognition. So it automatically comes on and then I can see what Siri is, how Siri is answering me. Automatic sync to iCloud. I have that backed up all the time. Um, uh, there are several ways that you can back up. So uh, Howie said uh, this morning when I was talking to him, he has an iPhone. It's a 256 gigabyte. That's a lot of space on that phone. Uh, um, Apple gives you five gigabytes worth of storage in the iCloud. So the way that I handle mine, I back up all of my, I don't need to back up my emails because I use iMapping. And so um, I, I can, if I, if, if I have to uh, get a new phone, the minute I log into my new emails uh, or to the to the, my email account, it automatically is backed up in 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 the Gmail cloud, so I don't have to worry about that. And I back up all of my photos to um, uh, to the Microsoft cloud, so I don't need to worry about that. But I back up my contacts, I back up my messages, back up everything else to the iCloud. What that means is when you get a new and, and all of your by the way and all of your apps. So if you get a new phone and you log into the iCloud and you had it and you have everything backed up, then when you turn your phone on, it'll automatically bring down all of your apps and put them back on your phone the, the way you had them. It'll also bring down all of your contacts. It'll bring down all of your prior messages. Um, if you use, which I do use the, um, uh, the not the location, but the, um, uh, the notes feature on my phone, I use that extensively. Uh, I have a lot of notes on my phone. That's all backed up. So when I get my, if I get a new phone, uh, then it automatically will back up those. If you're using an iPad and an iPhone and you back up to the cloud, then everything that you have on your phone will go to your iPad and vice versa. So that I, I do recommend you use that iCloud. If you need more than five gigabytes, they charge you. Uh, a fee for that. If that's something you want to know more about, again, uh, we can talk about that in the uh, on, on a Monday morning session. Automatic Wi-Fi connections. I have that turned on so that if I, um, as an example, um, when I go to my church and I work on Fridays, I automatically connect. When I walk into the church, it automatically connects me to that Wi-Fi. Uh, when I go to Panera Bread, I used to go to Panera Bread on Saturday mornings for a meeting or a Bible study, uh, I have it set to automatically link into their Wi-Fi there. Uh, so I have that set up. <clears throat> if you get a new phone, then you will need to reset up all these Wi-Fi locations uh, one by one. Uh, but it will remember those so that you don't have to continuously log into Wi-Fi at new locations. Uh, turn off cookies and browsing. That's entirely up to you. Uh, as you can see uh, on this one, it, it says block all cookies. I do block cookies. I don't care for cookies. Uh, there's no reason on my phone to use cookies uh, because I don't go into the internet and do anything. Uh, banking on the internet, I use applications on my phone for banking and therefore it doesn't require the uh, cookie to, uh, to get back to that banking location every time I go into it. Again, that's a preference thing for you to do. Battery, um, this is something that's uh, very important. Unfortunately, the, uh, the batteries on these phones, uh, they last, uh, fortunately, I guess the newer ones last quite some time. They've done a really good job of, of, um, of controlling the battery usage on these phones. There are a number of things you can do to, to keep it, uh, such as turn the screen off after a couple of minutes, um, uh, or, uh, <clears throat> or, or not, uh, or you can not raising the phone, that's another option. You can have it so when you raise it, it won't come on. You can tap it. So there are ways you can control the amount of, uh, uh, of battery usage. If you notice down here, reduce, bra uh, reduce brightness. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can reduce the use of the battery, but the new batteries and the new phones come pretty well set up to control the amount of battery. Uh, but there is a place in here you can see what battery percentage. Um, I have that turned on on mine so you can see it on the screen. But I also uh, can go into this battery feature 
and it'll tell me what the life of the battery is. Mine now, well, it says it will only fully charge to 95% useful life. Um, my phone is two and a half years old. My expectation is I'll get another, at least another year to year and a half out of this battery. Uh, then I need to make a decision whether I replace the battery in the phone or whether I get a new phone. So, uh, but you want to make sure that you uh, do control the battery on your phone. As you can see, or mine still charges up to 100% when, uh, when I charge it. Privacy, the privacy settings let you choose which applications you want to allow access to your phone. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side, um, I have mine turned on for various things such as Marriott, United, Mark, and Marcus Theater. The advantage of this is that if I make a hotel reservation or an airline reservation or a, a theater, for that matter, if I make a theater reservation uh, online through the app, it automatically puts that application on my calendar or the, or the event on my calendar. So I, I, then the calendar will remind me that I'm supposed to be at a, a certain place at a certain time. For hotels, it automatically puts the entire address in uh, and it'll and it'll put a little map on your uh, uh, on your calendar, so you can just tap the map and it'll show you the location of the hotel. So this is a feature that I like. Um, there are some people that don't like that, but I have mine turned on, so it's something that I find very convenient. Obviously, this last twelve months has not worked very well for me since we don't go anywhere. <laughs> control center. Uh, so the control center. Um, Whoops, sorry. The control center uh, at the, at the uh, top of the screen, it shows that you can access the control center from your settings if you like, but also uh, the control center itself uh, can be uh, uh, accessed through uh, swiping the phone. On the iPhones uh, eight and prior, uh, you swipe up from the lower um, uh, corner on the uh, on, on your phone, on the 10 and higher, you swipe from the upper right corner. I'm sorry, you swipe up from the bottom on your phone, on those. If you have a, a home button on your phone, you just swipe from the middle of your phone up. It'll bring this control center that you see here on the right. Uh, if you have a 10 uh, and higher, then you swipe down from the upper right corner. You can control what, what features you want to see in this control center. And that's what I was talking about earlier by going to settings and control center. You can customize the control center. You can put things in the control center. You can take things out of the control center. Pretty much everything you have on your phone, any apps you have on your phone, you can add to this control center, but it only allows so much in here. So you want to be careful what you put in the control center. Closing and switching between apps. Uh, on the on the eight and prior, of course, you have a home button. So you press the home button; it'll close the app. Uh, close close the app that you have open. On the ten and higher, you swipe up from the bottom left corner of the phone; it will close the app. Um, if you want to close all of the apps that you have open at one time, uh, then you can double click the um, the home button on your phone. It'll bring up all the apps you currently have open and then swipe them up to the top. Um, I would tell you that some people, when they've come into the lab and I show them this feature, they will have 20, 30, maybe even 50 apps open at one time. That's a battery usage thing too, because when you have apps open, particularly if you have Safari open, you're actually um, out on that internet and it's taken up battery life on the internet. So you want to keep your apps closed as, as much as possible uh, when you're not using them. There is an advantage to having multiple apps open. If you're switching back and forth between apps for some reason, you can swipe up again on my on the 10, you can swipe up in the lower left corner. You can see all the windows you have open. You can slide them uh, to the right and then, and then select the window you want to open. The other day I was doing something where I was putting information into uh, my calendar and I had the, um, uh, the, I would actually was picking up the information off of the Safari and I would try to remember the address. I tried to remember as much as I could, but so I could switch back and forth between the Safari app and the calendar app and, and complete the, uh, uh, the, you know, putting the information in just by going back and forth between those apps. Um, 
that's a very uh, um, that's a very handy feature. Now this is an old slide. I need to update this slide. Um, moving icons around. If you hold down on an icon, instead of seeing the little X that you see on there, on uh, since iOS 14 has come out, uh, it's a little dash, a red dash, instead of the X. Um, so you hold down on any icon that you want to move around, um, and all of the icons will start to wiggle, and that little X will, or that little dash will appear, and then you can just hold down on the one that you want to move and just slide it around. You can move it from one screen to the next uh, just by holding it and moving it over to that screen to the left or to the right, depending on where you want to go with it. Um, or you can move it up and down on within the screen itself. Just uh, if you want to delete an application, uh, you just click that little red dash or what I show here is an X, the little red dash, and then it'll come up with a window saying, do you really want to delete this app? And you say yes to it. Safari, uh, this is your access point to the internet. Um, you can use, whoops, yeah, uh, Safari is the access point to the internet. And uh, I think later on I talked about how you can, uh, yeah, in 14.4 you can control whether you wanna use Safari or Google for your search engine. The clock, the clock is a nice feature. It offers several functions. It offers a world clock, an alarm clock, a bedtime, a stopwatch and a timer. Um, the neat thing about the world clock, if you notice on the left-hand side of the screen, the lower clock, the top one, I have an alarm set up. Um, that's a time that I used to set my alarm for uh, to get up in the mornings. Uh, but the lower one, uh, the world clock allows you to put, so if you're traveling, let's say, um, uh, as an example, my wife and I went on a cruise over to uh, Northern Europe a while back. I put all the port stops that we uh, went to, I put that on the world clock so I could see what time zone I was in in those different stops. We went through multiple time zones. That's a very handy feature. Or if you have friends, uh, friends that may, or, or family that may live in different parts of the world or different parts of the United States, you can put this, uh, the different time zones in there and it's convenient for you to see what time it is. Notifications uh, is a function that allows you to on the iPhone and iPad to uh, to let you know when certain events occur. Um, mine automatically notifies me of, well, it notified me this morning that this this um, uh, this class was coming up. So it let me know that it was on my calendar for 10 o'clock. I have mine set for 15 minutes prior. You can set it for 30 minutes prior, but it'll tell you uh, what time uh, to, uh, or remind you what time you need to do uh, to take a certain uh, event. It'll also tell you, if you notice on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, there are different notifications that can pop up. Uh, I have notifications that pop up for news articles. Uh, I have notifications that pop up if you're traveling for United Airlines, because I'm a United Airlines member. And if uh, that's, that's handy, if you're in an airport and there's a gate change, a notification will pop up on your phone and tell you the gate has changed, so you go to a new location. Notice at the bottom of this, there are amber alerts and emergency alerts, uh, depending on the location you're in. When my wife and I uh, go away for the winter, uh, particularly down in, in uh, Alabama, we've had these uh, emergency alerts uh, pop up telling us there's either a hurricane or a tornado that's uh, coming in our area. The App Store is the place where you get all of the apps for your phone. Uh, I think there are, I, I, I had this number in my head, but it's at least a half a million apps that, that are already approved for Apple out there. So there's some, there are more apps than, than, than you will ever use on your phone. And I would suggest you only put apps on your phone that you plan to use on a regular basis. Uh, if you, there's something that I'll show you in a couple of minutes about um, something new in 14.4 that you don't need to uh, constantly uh, put apps on your phone for. But I would make sure that you put the apps on your phone you can also, uh, I would suggest that for the apps that you're going to use regularly, make sure you keep them on your home screen or front screen. And any apps that you don't use on a regular basis, put on a subsequent screen uh, behind that that you'd have to swipe over to get to. Memory. Um, this is something that we encounter. We, we had this on Monday. Uh, someone had a 32 gigabyte phone and they had 
almost the entire phone used up with pictures. So they could no longer update it to the new 14.4 version. We had to help them take pictures off of the phone in order to do that. Uh, this is extremely important. If you're going to get a new phone, make sure you get enough memory. The standard uh, uh, Apple now doesn't offer anything in their newer phones lower than 64 uh, gigabytes, but they also offer 128, 256. They may even have a 500 gigabyte phone in the new uh, Apple 12 um, uh, Pro. Uh, but uh, I would not get anything below a 64 anymore for most folks especially if you're going to use your phone as a camera because it takes up quite a bit of uh, space to store all the pictures. Back up in iTunes, I've already talked about the iCloud. Uh, there is a feature called iTunes that you can put on a Windows computer. I have it on mine. I use it to sync my music to my phone with. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't use my pictures that way. I do that with a different one. Uh, but you can actually back up your entire phone to this uh, iTunes uh, on your computer. Now, I caution you that if you're backing up to the iTunes on the computer, you're not backing up to the cloud unless you have your computer backed up to another uh, cloud source, either iCloud or something else. I would suggest that you use the iCloud for certain backup features, and that's something uh, that you can ind individually tailor, as I talked about earlier. If you have questions about that, come into the lab and we will work with you on those. Okay, so, and I'm almost finished. Um, some features that are on iOS 14, I thought you might be interested in. Uh, there are lots of features out there, but uh, I, I just kind of highlighted a few. First off, uh, iOS 14 will currently work on these models. Um, on the iPhone 6s, there's an iOS 15 coming out. You will not be able, it will not support uh, 6 and or anything prior to 7. And I suspect that uh, at, at some point in the future, the new iOS operating system will not support anything prior to 10. But for right now, uh, 14 will support uh, the 6 and, pro and, and forward. Uh, for the iPads, uh, you can see the different iPads in here, the 5th uh, to 7th generations, uh, back to the iPad uh, Air 2. Uh, so they, they still support some of the older ones. Again, if you have an older piece of equipment and you're coming up on the newer system, which is coming out this fall, um, it, which is iOS 15, you won't be able to, the, the, the newer equipment won't support it. I believe Jim, who I was talking to earlier that has a, a five, uh, iPhone five, and he couldn't get the iOS 14 on it. If you notice from this screen, it doesn't support five anymore. So uh, if you want to get the, uh, the new program, um, you just, uh, you go to, uh, well, if you want to know what the version of your phone is, uh, you just click on the settings button and then go to general, uh, then go to about, and then this is the model of the phone that you see in here, which is the uh, iPhone XR, that's 10R. Um, that's the, the model that I use. Um, 10, 10 has the Pro and, 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 the, uh, and also a 10, a regular 10. But the XR was a, a lower version of it for a better price. Um, you want to you want to put the software on your phone. Go to settings, general. Go to software update. It'll auto. It, you, it should have automatic updates turned on. It'll show you. In this case, it's fourteen point one. Um, if it if it shows up with a uh, yes as a more current version, then you just download it and install it on your phone. I would tell you on the installation of these, these newer versions of iOS, it seems to be taking longer and longer. I remember updating the phones prior to 14, it seemed it took about 10 or 15 minutes. Now it's taking close to half an hour to update the phones. Uh, that's because these operating systems are so much more uh, powerful. Um, on the home screen, this is something that's really neat on the home screen. Um, it's called a, uh, an app library. Uh, it has a number of features in it, and it warehouses applications based on the overall usage. So if it's something that you use on a regular basis, you can flip to this uh, app library, uh, and it will uh, probably find the application that you want to use in the app library. It sorts them automatically for you into a number of categories. 
there's a way that you can um, uh, use an app without actually installing it on your phone. I talked about that earlier in 14.4. Uh, in this case, they use Panera Bread. You can go out to Safari. You can pull up Panera Bread uh, without installing the app on your phone. It, it actually allows you to complete the order uh, with Panera Bread. And then the next time that you want to use this app, if you go over to this app library I've talked about, it'll be in recently used um, uh, folders. It'll be in recently used folders. So you just click on that folder and you'll see that app waiting for you to use. That's a pretty neat feature. Uh, the other two things that they've done with 14, you can select instead of using the Apple uh, uh, mail feature, which you see on the right-hand side over here, uh, you can actually use the Outlook uh, mail and you can delete the mail uh, application off of your phone. Apple used to not allow you to, to delete any of its proprietary applications. The two things that it allows you to do now is set email app and I have done that on mine to Outlook and also in Safari uh, when you go to Safari which is your search engine click on um, the uh, search I'm, I'm sorry the settings button go to Safari uh, and then if you notice in my case, I use Google search. So instead of using theirs, you can use Google, Yahoo, Bing, or DuckDuckGo. I, I selected Google. So whenever I go into Safari, I'm actually going directly to Google for my search engine. That's the end of my presentation this morning. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and see what questions I have. So let me go out to, I uh, see I have. Only one chat. Just wondering, does a new iPhone still allow you to use a thumb, a thumbprint to open the phone? The answer to that is no. Uh, the thumbprint was tied to the uh, home button. Uh, you either can use facial recognition or just use a code. But the thumbprint capability has gone away with the uh, iPhone 10 and above. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, feel free to either um, uh, enter a question on your uh, chat screen or uh, just unmute yourself. Could, could uh, I, I ask a, a question? Uh, hold on just a second. I, yeah, you can. Hold on just a second. I have a question on uh, VPNs. Uh, I have not used a VPN in recent years. I used to use a VPN when I worked. Uh, the business that I work for, the, the corporation, required us to use VPN to access. Um, and so I have used a VPN. Uh, I know Shelly uses one regularly, uh, right, Shelly? Yeah. And, um, and it is a very secure way. Why don't you talk about a little more, Shelly, because you're more familiar than I am. Yeah, VPN is a virtual private network. Um, if you're just using the phone in your house, it's not really an issue. But when, let's say, you go to a McDonald's or uh, uh, Bill mentioned Panera Bread, uh, you know, those types of places where you're using the Wi-Fi um, uh, at, at, a, at a place where they may have customers uh, uh, that are also using the Wi-Fi and you don't, you want to make sure that you're not going to be, uh, your phone is not going to get hacked. Uh, you should definitely uh, use a turn on a VPN at that point. There are free VPNs, uh, and there are also some uh, some ones that you can purchase on a subscription basis. Um, it's a, usually an annual subscription, um, but they're relatively uh, inexpensive. Or, as I say, you can also even get a free one, um, and uh, uh, highly recommended <coughs> at uh, uh, when you're in places where you want to uh, maintain your security. Thanks, Shelly. Okay, somebody had a question. I have some more questions over here, but I'll answer the question that was, who had a question for me? Well, I, I had a question. Uh, it's Sue. Is the only way that I can get rid of all of these robo calls is to work with my carrier, that it's not the phone, anything about the phone can't be changed not to accept robo calls? Okay. Um, I talked about this one emails earlier, and I can tell you that there's a feature on the iPhone that will allow you to block all calls except those calls that are in your uh, that are in your address book. So uh, you can do that if you want to. You can turn that on, uh, and then no call will come to you except those that you have 
identified in your address book. Again, the caution that I have for that is okay. if, if, particularly if you have a doctor that's new and you've never been to that doctor and they're trying to call you and you've not put their number in your phone book, then, then they wouldn't ring through for you. Well, I, I understand that. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know, even if you were to try to block all the, the robo calls, they still come through, only they're silent. So is that how they're going to come through? They won't come is through at all. No call will even show up on your phone. Oh, no, they, they, they do show up on the phone. Oh, and do they? they can also leave a message. So if it's okay. the doctor's office, they'll leave a message and then you can call back and add that phone number to your contacts. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm out. not used that feature, so I'm yeah, not familiar. I love it. I love it. You do love it? Yeah. And it blocks all robocalls, doesn't it? It blocks all the robocalls, all the... Right. And I can control that by... I can still see that someone called and I still get a voice message. Okay. And I can add the phone if I so desire. So I, okay. I love it because Very there's good. 20 calls I get a day that are robocalls. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me, and, and I do have to go back and check to make sure I haven't gotten an important call as I did yesterday, so I could call back and add that number to my... Thank you. Right. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple more questions over here. How do I switch to calendar when I'm on the phone? This is a very good question because it comes up all the time. The answer is... I don't know um, Okay, whoever has a dog barking, mute for me, please. Uh, okay, so if you're on your phone and you want to access your calendar, if you have a eight or prior, you push the home button. Uh, and when you push the home button, it will automatically bring you back to your main screen. Uh, and then you just open up the calendar. You'll notice up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little green section on the phone that shows that you're actually that you're talking on the phone so uh access your calendar do whatever you want to your calendar you can still you're still talking to whoever's on the phone call with you and then uh at the end of uh of the calendar and you save the calendar event then you can push that little green button in order to end the call or that person if they end the call that's the end of it for you but yes you can access your, you can access anything on your phone while you're talking to somebody, if you want to do a search. Uh, let's see, uh, the other comment I had was, Bill, I came in in the middle of your presentation, sounded like you did a lot of work, uh, information, thanks for the class. This one, I don't see password and security on my phone. I just, it just says passwords. I have an iPhone 11 uh, with 14.4. Okay, so just go to passwords then. I think they may have changed that password and security to just passwords. That's not an issue. Um, logged in late, sorry, already addressed. Uh, that's okay, nothing there. Thanks for the answer on VPN. Is there an advantage to using Google over Safari? Uh, is there an advantage to using other system over email in the iPhone? No, it's a preference. Uh, in both situations, it's a preference. Uh, I'm, just a, I'm just so used to Google that I, I like the Google feature, you know, the search feature. As far as um, as far as the um, mail feature, uh, I use Outlook on my uh, uh, on my PC, so I'm used to the Outlook features. So I like to use Outlook. I have Outlook on my phone, but if you are a Gmail user, as an example, or a Yahoo, you know, we've been running into this, Shelley. Uh, we ran into this on Monday. If you are a Yahoo user. Uh, or AOL. Both or AOL, AOL, thank you. Or AOL. <clears throat> the the um, mail feature on your phone will no, is no longer supported. So you'll have to put their application on your phone. Yahoo Mail or AOL, AOL Mail, and then you can log into their mail and it'll still work fine for you. Gmail, again, you don't have to use that. But Gmail, if you're a Gmail user, I would suggest putting the Gmail app on your phone because it probably has some features that are unique to Gmail that are more advanced than, than say the Apple phone mail app is, is, uh, uh, offers you. Uh, with regard to uh, uh, Google over Safari, it's, it's a question of what you're used to. Uh, if you're using a, uh, uh, an iMac and you're used to using Safari on that, um, then you may yeah. want to use that on your phone. If you're a PC user and you're 
used to using either Google search or Bing search, um, then you may be uh, more comfortable using that. Exactly. Okay. Um, for a person who had question on blocking email addresses in Yahoo. Oh, okay. There was a, there's a link that somebody put out there. Uh, under passwords, I don't see anything about two-step authentication. Um, let me go back to that again for a second. Go to settings, name. Yeah, okay. Um, let me, um, the question is from Esther. Okay, if you if you go to the settings, go okay. Let me let me do this. Uh, I want to do something here. Hold on, just a second. Okay, get rid of that. Share screen. Okay, so uh, I use, by the way, this is, this is what the uh, app library looks like. You can see the, the, the way it clusters in here. Um, and um, uh, I use the same feature where I've clustered all of my applications and I have them in categories. Uh, so I'm gonna go to settings. When I go to settings, I'm gonna go to my name and then under my name is password and security. Under password and security is two-factor authentication. I turned it on. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I, I see it now. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a shared screen turned on at the moment. So I, I don't know. Can I get the chats to, as well? Uh, let's see. No, I can't see the chats. Any other questions that I have while I have this on? Because I like to use this as a as a, a learning technique. Yeah, that was the last question under chats. Uh, okay. If you have a question, you can just unmute yourself at this point as well, um, or you can enter it into the chat. Okay. Uh, let Thanks me. Uh, doing, Bill. Thank you. Yep. What, what was this spot. session recorded? Um, yes. yes, it is. And um, we should uh, have this class. Um, it'll be uploaded uh, probably either later today or tomorrow. Um, and I will send out an email when that's ready. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for attending. We, we value these presentations. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Shelley, have you posted the general meeting on taxes yet? Um, I'm in the middle of working on that. Uh, I've got it half done, so the other I'll be finishing okay. that. Well, it'll be done the, before the weekend. It'll be done today, yeah. Thank you. I Can I ask one more question? Yeah. You, you what may. is screen mirroring? What is screen mirroring? Yes. That's what I just did a minute ago. That's when you mirror your screen onto another object. If you, um, if you have Apple TV, as an example, on your, on your, on your television, mm -hmm. uh, you can use screen mirroring to project what's on your phone directly into your uh, TV. Mm -hmm. So if you want to show photos or something like that, you can use screen mirroring. Wow. Okay. Yeah, beyond it's, me it's, right it's, now. Yeah, it's very useful if you're watching a YouTube video on your phone, for mm -hmm. example, and you want to, uh, uh, instead of watching it on, on your phone, you, you say, oh, I wish this was much larger. You can um, either Chromecast or screen mirror it onto, uh, onto your TV and, uh, and see it on the large screen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Yes, is it ill-advised to have too many apps on your phone? Um, no. Go ahead. There's no, there's no disadvantage. Or... No, and it doesn't take up any, as long as you keep them closed, like I talked about earlier, 
it's not taking up battery life. By closing, you mean hitting the button at the bottom of my phone, right? You have a you have an eight or prior, yeah. Yeah, I do. It's and don't forget what I talked about closing apps. Now you close the app by hitting that uh, home button, right. but if you double click the home button, you'll see that the you'll see an array of apps that pop up, and those apps are still open on your phone. So the uh, you're still using battery uh, the battery life on your phone when they're still open. Do you follow what I just said? So I should go back and close each one of those then that are still unless, open? Unless you're using those, yes. Unless, like I use the example where you can go back and forth between two apps to do something. Unless mm -hmm. you're using those, I would close them all the time. Keep them closed, yeah. You I just, keep all the apps on my phone closed all the time. You just swipe them to remove them. Right. From activity. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've had a problem for a long time trying to get rid of those open apps. I, I have an 11 Pro Max, and I know I'm supposed to swipe up, but when I swipe up, I don't get anything. Okay, swipe up from the lower left corner of your screen. Nothing's happening. I, I just, okay, you can see I have... One, two, three apps open right now. And let's see, I, let me open an app and let me open an app and close it again. And close it again. Okay. So it, it, it is a, it, it, when you first get your phone, it's got to get used to you. I use my thumb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see my phone? Yes. yes. And I just swipe up from the bottom like that. Swipe right up from the bottom like that. And it automatically brings those apps open. I got it. There you go. Thank it, you. It, the phone has to get used to you a little bit. It took me a little while when I moved from the 8. Uh, I had an 8. When I moved from my 8 to my 10, it took me a little while to get used to that swiping feature. Very so good. after I swipe, then I just swipe to the right and they all go. No, swipe, no, swipe up. If you swipe yes, I right. swipe up and I see them, but then to get rid of them, I have to swipe to the right. No, swipe up. Just oh, just them. swipe them up to get rid of them. Okay. If you swipe to the right, you're keeping it open and you're just going over to see the next screen. Okay. So swipe up actually gets rid of see Oh, how many? I see. I've okay. got it. Thank how you. Many, how many do you have open? How do I know? Well, you'll see them. <laughs> oh, well, them. I've, I've got a lot. There you go. Yeah, you probably do. I would say you probably have 20 or more. You know, when you go into Safari and or you look at an email and you click on something and then you get a website, does that automatically go into, when you look at your Safari screen, there's a little bottom right, it looks like two things. Does it... Do all the websites go there automatically or do you have to say save that? Because I get an awful lot that I don't think I put there. Um, yes, they um, now they, if you're in Safari, the little boxes you see on the bottom right hand corner. Yep. If you if you tap on that box, um, then uh, well, if you hold down on that box, it'll it'll allow you. The, the multiple boxes, it'll allow you to close all the screens that you have open at one time. But if you tap on it, it'll, it'll allow you to see all the uh, Safari screens you have open and do the same thing I just did, where you can, you can swipe right to see what's, what's open, or you can swipe up to get rid of them. Oh, okay. That's in Safari. But Safari has the capability of closing everything at once. And that is holding down on those little, those two little boxes. And when you hold down on them, it'll pop a window up that says, do you want to close ten, all 10 applications? If you uh, say yes to that, then it'll close all those applications for you automatically. Mine says close all 218. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, you're, you're using battery up. I would suggest you close all those up, yeah. Okay, they're gone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And you, you had mentioned a way to close all the apps if you have the button on the bottom. 
Did you mention how to close all the apps if you don't have it? I have an 11. So is there a way to close all the apps I've opened? And I usually close them every day. No, no, there's not a way to close okay. all the apps. Only, only in uh, Safari can you close everything at once. Okay, but not all the apps. Okay. That's correct. On the apps, you have to, you have to swipe from the, the same thing with your 11 I do with my 10. Swipe up from the uh, lower left corner. It'll show you the apps are open and then just start swiping those to the top and all the apps will just, and they'll close them. Okay. And while those apps are open, if they're accessing something, you are using battery. I try to remember to get rid of them every night. Yeah. I, I get rid of, I actually, when I'm finished working with an application, I keep all my apps closed all the time. It's just a, it's just a force of habit that I have. And, it, and I get, I get two days on a battery still with a two and a half year old phone. I get two days of battery life. And that's with regular phone calling. And uh, I do a lot. I do most of my emails on my phone. Huge portion of my emails I do on my phone. So I use my phone all day, every day. Yeah. Since I have a watch now, I actually do a lot of the work on my watch now. So, <laughs> which you'll see next month if you, if you come to the class. So that's going to be an introduction, by the way, Ralph. I've decided that's going to be an introduction class to to watch, not a how-to class. Um, while I have some how-to features in it, I'm actually going to introduce the watch, you know, because a lot of people may want to come on just to see what the watch is all about. So you like the watch. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Good idea, Bill. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten one, and I'm just somehow not convinced yet. That's up to you. I mean, I, 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 th I would, I would confess that the way I got mine was my son gave it to me, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. made it easy for me. <laughs> yeah. Why so is it that sometimes when you? Oh, I'm sorry. Once, once you get it, you, you won't you will want to keep it going. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Why is it that sometimes when um, you get a phone call or a FaceTime call, sometimes it rings on the iPad and sometimes it rings on your iPhone? Um, it depends on whether your iPad's open. Yes, that, that is, it will always ring on one or both. of. Actually, you could access it from either device, but yes, that happens when you've got an iPad and an iPhone. It just happens. It just happens. Yeah. It depends on how the call. Yeah. It just. So if it rings on my phone, but I'd rather use my iPad, I can pick it up on the iPad? You should be able to. Yeah. Okay. I'll try that next time. Yeah. Now, here's, now here's, a, here's something you might want to think about. Do you use Wi-Fi uh, calling on your iPhone? I don't really know what Wi-Fi calling is. Okay. If you use Wi-Fi wi calling, your iPad, is your iPad tied strictly to Wi-Fi or do you have it on a service like um, Verizon or something? No, it's just to the Wi-Fi. Just to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so phone calls that come in, come into your phone may or may not come into your iPad if you, if you don't have Wi-Fi calling on. But if you have Wi-Fi calling on, then the, wi then the calls actually come in through the Wi-Fi and it'll usually ring on both devices. Now, when it comes to FaceTime, FaceTime is always going to ring on both devices because FaceTime is 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 on both devices all the time. It doesn't ring both times, but it, it doesn't. No. Hmm. <laughs> and and sometimes when I'm FaceTiming, when if my daughter calls me, then she's upside down. And I keep moving the iPad and she just is always upside down. So we just start over. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I FaceTime with my iPad, but I, well, I FaceTime with my phone sometimes too. But I prefer the iPad because it gives a much larger picture for FaceTime. Right. And I don't know if you're using the multiple FaceTime like we're doing on Zoom. You can have up to 12 FaceTime uh, recipients at one time on a FaceTime call now. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Oh, that's so. Yeah. You can use that instead of Google, or Google you Meet. Use, instead of what? Instead of Meet Google, sometimes I use Meet yeah. Google because it doesn't have the forty-minute uh, restriction. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, you can use FaceTime if all the if all the participants right. are Apple users. 
Yeah. Now, if, if you have a, a um, you know, a non-Apple user in the group, then you still have to use the uh, Google Meets. Yeah. Can you tell me again what the Wi-Fi calling is? I didn't get it. It just means that instead of uh, the call coming directly from a cell tower, it's actually coming through the Wi-Fi into your home. It's a Wi-Fi sometimes, call. Sometimes, yeah, if you're, if you're uh, having problems getting your um, uh, phone signal in your house or inside of a building mm -hmm. or in certain places, sometimes the signal is not too good. Um, what you can do is turn on Wi-Fi calling, and that way, instead of using the um, your carrier signal, be it Verizon, AT and T, or T-Mobile, or whatever, um, you would be using your Wi-Fi, your internet connection, to make the call. And how do you do that? Okay, I just I just looked that up. <laughs> so go to settings. Because that basically is what Skype was. Yeah. Go to, go to no, settings. No, no. You got your settings screen open? Yeah. You see the word cellular? Yes. It's, a, it's the fourth one down. Click on cellular. And then uh, there's uh, on mine, I have cellular data. I have stuff at the top and then at the bottom. Mine says Xfinity Mobile and I have Wi-Fi calling and it says on. Oh. Do you see Wi-Fi calling? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you touch the Wi-Fi calling, does yours say on or off? Oh, my, mine was off. If you touch that Wi-Fi calling, then there's a little, a little button on there. You can just turn it on and you'll have Wi-Fi calling on. And you could leave that on all the time. There's no I, I leave mine on 100% of the time, yep. I do too, Bill, that's great. It's a good yep. cost savings. Yeah, it is. And underneath that, it says prefer Wi-Fi while roaming. Yeah, and I have that off. I have that off on mine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I have the Xfinity uh, plan, but it's tied to Verizon. So when I'm roaming, it, it's roaming Verizon. And that's a very good network for me to roam on. Yeah. But you will find, it. thank you, Shelly, for reminding me of that. You will find that the quality of your calls inside of your house will be much better than... Uh, uh, than if you're dependent on a cell tower, and especially if you're walking around inside your house. There, I know some people with certain, certain cell towers have had more or less, uh, you know, good coverage in their homes. So, so when so you say make the savings, so it's because you're using the Wi-Fi in your house rather than using your data from your carrier. Well, yeah, you're not using data when you're making a phone call. Right, um, you're not using that. But, but if the signal, it depends whether the signal from your um, from your carrier is um, not is, is weaker than the signal, let's say from your internet. There are uh, some places in in some city that AT and T signals not very good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now this is interesting about Wi-Fi calling. So let's say you go to England. And you got Wi-Fi calling turned on and you're in your hotel room and they've got Wi-Fi in your hotel room and you've hooked up to the Wi-Fi network. Now you can make a phone call from England free back to the United States. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yes. And you can FaceTime for oh, free. Oh, my goodness. With Wi-Fi. We get on cruise ships cool. and my wife and I are in the middle of the ocean somewhere and we're FaceTiming our granddaughters. Yeah. Or Zoom or Skype or any of those. Exactly. It's all free because you're on Wi-Fi. Well, on the ship, you got to pay for the Wi-Fi, but most hotels are free. So if I make a call and I have Wi-Fi calling on, is it going to use my Verizon or is it going to use Wi-Fi? Or it's going to use Wi-Fi. Yeah, I have Wi-Fi. Yeah, and I have an uh, unlimited with uh, Verizon anyway. Yeah. So... It's just the quality. It's like Shelly said, I forgot about that. And Shelly's right. The reason I used Wi-Fi calling for years is because the quality of the call is so much better than, than trying to use the cell towers. And we've been on, let's see, Verizon, Sprint, uh, US Cellular. I've been on several plans since we've lived here in 16 years. And I found Wi-Fi to be the best way to call when I walk around the house. Mm -hmm. 
This has been a wonderful presentation. It's my first one, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Shelly? Yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks for, for another great presentation. And uh, yeah, and thank you all for, uh, for attending these classes. Yeah. Thank you. And don't forget that on don't forget that on Monday mornings, if you have questions, we this last Monday I think we had more Apple questions than we did anything else, didn't we, Shelly? We had a few of them, yeah. Yeah. Are those recorded so we can listen to later? Yeah, Monday sessions, no, no, yeah. but because we're essentially solving um, people's True. issues, their yeah. individual problems. But we do use the breakout room, which is nice. So if we have multiple people on at one time. We can separate people helping you, you know, like some of us will go into a breakout room. So it's like a two or three person session. That's really nice. And I've had my iPhone for a long time. And even though this was going through that, it's like, I'm sure there's things I don't know. Because <laughs> you're used to using the phone the way that you use your phone and you don't know what you don't know. That's right. So. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.